Stop, stop what you're doing. Do not buy that mobile home. Don't do it until you understand exactly what you're doing. And that's what we're gonna cover here today. The 2024 Mobile Home Buyers Cheat Sheet. My name is Mark Kaiser. I'm one of the lead brokers for the mobile home dealer. We are licensed mobile home brokers here in the state of Florida. And over the last few years, we've been able to sell hundreds and hundreds of mobile homes. So with that being said, make sure you watch the entire video from front to back to get a really good idea of exactly what you should be looking for when you have decided on that mobile home so that you are a more educated buyer and not just going with what the seller says. And folks, if you find any value in this, please do us a favor and subscribe to our channel. Become a part of the mobile home dealer community as we have a lot of fun on this channel showing you some of the best properties in the state of Florida as well as bringing you these educational tidbits. So whether you're buying or you're selling a mobile home, you are as educated as possible in this wild and fun world of mobile homes. So what do you say we get started? And welcome, welcome, welcome to the 2024 Mobile Home Buyers Cheat Sheet. The first one, the first part, the main part of this whole deal, you've got to understand the structural components of the mobile home that you're looking at. Now, structural components and cosmetic components are two totally and vastly different things. Your cosmetic components are gonna be the paint color. They're gonna be the color of the appliances, that type of stuff. <clears throat> now, although those items are important, they frankly do not carry nearly the weight as the structural components. The structural components that we're gonna talk about here today are gonna to be the roof. That's the first one. When you look into a mobile home, if you can't hop up on a ladder and take the outside view, kind of the eagle's view, if you will, of the roof, that's fine. You can get a really good idea of the condition of the roof by simply walking in and looking up. If you see anything that looks like a coffee stain, I don't know, like that right there, that'll tell you, it's like a where's Waldo, you're always gonna be staring at that now. That, that will tell you that at some point in time there was a roof leak, okay? Now that doesn't mean that it's leaking now, Make sure you touch it. If it's cool, if it's damp, it's probably a, a current leak. If it's dry and it's and, and it's it's very dry and almost coarse, that'll give you an idea that it was a leak sometime in the past. Maybe they re-roofed the house or they patched the roof and it's not an issue anymore. But make sure you always look for the coffee stains on the ceiling. Another easy way to decide if it, if you have a, a, a leaky roof is walk in and kind of smell. Smell and, and, and see if you smell anything that's kind of danky, kind of moldy. That'll give you a really good idea if you have a leaky roof. If you have a leaky roof, it does not necessarily mean that the deal won't be a good one, but it'll be a serious point of conversation when it comes to negotiating the price. The reason why is mobile home roofs are by far the most expensive structural change in the home. Because a lot of times when you're fixing the roof or you're redoing the roof, it's not just that. You're now looking at paneling that has to be replaced or sheetrock that has to get pulled out, that type of thing. So if you have a leaky roof in a house that you notice right out of the bat, just kind of know that that could very well be Pandora's box that you're opening should you decide to buy that property. The second one, you've got to understand what the air conditioning system is. If it's a window unit or if it's a mini split, and we've profiled several homes with mini splits on the walls, that's not necessarily that big of a concern simply because those aren't that expensive to replace. Now, you obviously wanna make sure they turn on, they, that they, they provide cool air. Hopefully they have a heat component to it for the couple of weeks a year that you need the heat down in South Florida. Um, but you wanna make sure that they at least run and they work. If they don't, it's not the bad, again, it's not that big of a deal simply because they're not that expensive to fix. What is expensive to fix is central AC units. So you've got to make sure that if it has central AC and it's been ducked for the entire home or part of the home, turn the thermostat on, wait for it to kick on, make sure that it blows cold. Another thing with the central AC unit, go outside, look at it. If you can't find the date on it, then that's not necessarily the end of the world, but just get a pretty good idea of what it looks like, okay? You don't have to be an, a an HVAC tech to understand that if it looks that old, maybe it came over on the Mayflower, that's, could, that's gonna be a problem and you might be on borrowed time. Central AC units are not cheap to replace, so make sure you understand what the central AC situation is. The next one is the plumbing. 
The plumbing is gonna be a very expensive update. Most homes that are older at some time have had the plumbing redone. If it has not or you're not sure, the easy way to do it is just to open up a cabinet or a cupboard where there is gonna be water lines, okay? So maybe under the kitchen sink, the bathroom sink. Uh, open that up, turn your cell phone on with the, with the, with the light and see if you see any type of uh, drips, any leaking. Uh, does it look like it's a white pipe? Does it look like it's a gray pipe? Get an idea for that. If you also have the ability to get on your hands and knees, look under the home. See if there's any large pools of water or things that don't smell real good. That'll give you, give you an idea if there is leaking under the mobile home. That can be a very costly expense. And oh yeah, while you're at it, Take a look at the hot water heater, even if it's a smaller one, trying to get an idea of what the date is, because hot water heaters can certainly be a more expensive update. The last one from a structural standpoint, my favorite, look for termites. I know this is not the most attractive thing to talk about, but you've got to make sure that you look around for them. The easy things to look for is if it does not look like a construction site, but you look like you're starting to see piles of sawdust in the corners of the house, that is usually gonna be a telltale sign of an active termite colony. The other thing that you can do is look on the window sills. Look on the window sills and see if you see any insect wings. A couple here and there, I wouldn't get that concerned, but if you're starting to see piles and upon piles, that can definitely give you an idea that either there currently is a huge termite problem or there currently was one in the recent past. So you wanna make sure that, again, you get an idea of what the situation is with the termites. So the roof, the AC, the plumbing, and the termites, if any one of those really sticks out, it's not necessarily a, a deal killer, but if all four of those are sticking out, make sure you make note of those when it comes down to negotiating your price. The next one, look at how long the home has been on the market. If you're buying a for sale by owner home, just straight ask them, hey, Mr. and Mr. Seller, how long have you been trying to sell your home? Get a good idea for that. If you're using a reputable mobile home broker, like the mobile home dealer, then we'll tell you because we literally have all the information on our hands and we will explain to you how long it has been on market, maybe if we've had offers or not. Get an idea for how long that seller has been going through the stressful process of trying to sell their home. Again, make note of that. The next one is always understand what the lot rent is. We've talked about lot rent ad nauseum in our Facebook lives and our other YouTube videos. So if you're not totally sure on what lot rent is or how this works, go ahead and take a look at some of our other videos and you'll be able to get a real good idea of exactly what it is. Now, the reason why you want to get an idea for what lot rent is to use that is you want to get a better idea for exactly how much this home is going to cost you to hold Okay, if the lot rent is $500, but it doesn't include anything, then you might have to also budget for your water, your sewer, your trash. You also have to budget for your electric. How about your cable and internet? Now, if the lot rent does include a bunch of that, well, that's fine. You just have to understand how much is it going to cost you to carry the property. The next two are gonna be very important too. Make sure that you're able to understand how you're gonna pay for the home. I know that sounds silly, but after selling several hundred homes ourselves, there are buyers out there who get excited about a house and then they're like, oh yeah, I have to pay for this thing. I know it sounds goofy and you're rolling your eyes, but believe me, we have heard it all. So make sure you understand how you're gonna pay for the house. If you're gonna pay for cash and you have the financial resources to do that, then make sure you let the buyer, that the seller, excuse me, know you're paying with cash. Cash is king. If you're gonna to have to look at financing it, that's fine. Just let them know how you're planning on paying for that home and also know that for your own benefit. The next one, make sure you understand what the park approval process is. Okay, now every mobile home in the state of Florida where you're buying the house and you're paying lot rent, the park is gonna put you through some type of park approval process to make sure that you are on the same playing field as all the other residents. I stress that you understand what the park approval process is. The big problem that we run into with folks is the lot rent. If the lot rent is a particular amount of money, most parks require a 2.5 to three times gross wages to lot rent ratio. That's a mouthful, let me explain it real fast. So if the lot rent is $500 and they want a three X, that means they want a gross wages of everybody living in the home combined to be about $1,500 per month. 
Now, you can see if that may be manageable for you. That may be a stretch. I don't know. You're going to have to figure that on your own. But the higher the lot rent, the multiple usually will not change. So if you're looking at a home with $1,500 lot rent, then we're going to have to be looking somewhere around about that $4,500 a month gross wages. Now, those wages can come from a lot of different things. So make sure you check with the park and to understand exactly how they are gonna factor in the income. But do not assume that if you can pay for the house in cash or finance it, you will immediately be approved by the park on a financial basis. It's not how it works. The cost of the home and the cost of the lot rent are two totally different things. Make sure you know your money situation before you start applying for park residency. The last one on this checklist for the year is going to be one that a lot of people don't talk about. And I appreciate you staying around till the very end of the video to learn about this. The last one is going to be make offers. That's right. Make a ton of offers. Now, let me explain. Don't make offers just to waste everybody's time. If a home is $50,000, don't just start making offers for five grand here and five grand there. Just saying, well, I've got the cash and I'm park approved. Frankly, you're wasting everybody's time and that's honestly not courteous to anybody, the sales agent, the broker, the, 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 the seller, anybody. Be realistic with your offer, but at the same time, make multiple offers on multiple houses. There are deals out there. There are a lot of deals out there, and you're never going to know unless you start making offers. If you find a, a mobile home park with a couple of houses that could definitely work for you, make offers. Let them know, hey, I want to offer this, or hey, I want to offer that. Again, don't waste people's time, but again, you are the buyer, so you're in the driver's seat with this, and you're only going to know if you make the offer. So with that being said, let's review our 2024 Mobile Home Buyers Check Sheet uh, one more time. Number one, make sure you understand what the structural components are. The main structural components, your roof, your AC, your plumbing, and your termites. Know what the scoop is on that. Take a look, make sure you, you, you make notes on that. The next one, how long has the home been on the market? How long are they trying to been, been trying to sell this house? Make that note. Next one, understand what the lot rent is. Understand what your financial responsibilities will be for the park. If you walk into this blind, which unfortunately a lot of buyers do, and they say, I can afford the house, then they go through the park approval process and they find out they can't afford the lot rent, you kind of wasted everybody's time because you didn't do your homework. Don't be that buyer. The next one, if you can pay cash or if you need to finance it, either one, make sure you know again what your financial responsibilities are and how you can make sure that you can purchase this home. Always understand what the park approval process is. Do not assume that just because you can buy the house means that you're going to qualify for the park when it comes down to actually it being a park approved. And the last one, guys, just make offers. Throw offers out there. Don't waste people's time, but also maximize your time when looking at these homes. So with that being said, grab a pen, make these notes, refer to this video as many times as possible. And if you utilize these steps that I just laid out for you, I promise you folks, you will be in a great position going forward in 2024 to buy the mobile home that you've always wanted. My name is Mark. You've been with The Mobile Home Dealer. Thank you so much for taking time to watch this video, and I hope you found value in it. And as always, we'll see y'all on the next one.